If you spend any time on this channel, you know that I like automation when it comes to working with WordPress, building websites and connecting all manner of different WordPress plugins up to external services and so on. Well, when Bitflows contacted me recently and asked me to take a look at their new plugin, I was kind of intrigued to see what it does. They were also kind enough to sponsor three videos on this channel. This first one is just going to be an overview of how Bitflows works. But because it's sponsored, I'm going to give you no opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate how it works. You can make a more informed decision for yourself. Now, first of all, what exactly is Bitflows and what exactly is automation? Well, Bitflows is an advanced workflow automation plugin designed specifically for WordPress. It offers a robust alternative to platforms like Zapier. It also enables you to create complex multi-step workflows to a simple and easy to use drag and drop visual builder, which we'll take a look at in this video. It facilitates seamless data transfer between various different applications. So now we've got the official kind of description of the way, let's just jump in and take a look at how it works. Okay, so once you've installed the plugin and there's a free version and a pro version, I've got pro installed, but if you want to check this out for yourself, you can try the free version to get a feel for how it all works. Once you've installed it, you're going to get a new option inside your dashboard. And inside there, we want to take a look at our flows. This is where we can start creating the actual flow itself. So first thing you want to do is give this a name and create a new flow. Let's give it a name. Then we can choose to view the get started guide or create a blank, or we can use some previous examples. Let's just choose the blank and click on create. And this then takes us into the canvas. Now, this is a nice visual way of being able to see exactly what's going on. It's going to go from left to right, and you can go horizontal or vertical and move things around and just kind of drag things around as you see fit. It's a nice, easy way of working. Whenever you do any kind of automation, and this is not just with Bitflows, this is pretty much with any kind of automation tool. Everything is going to work with two different options. It's going to work with a trigger that causes at least one action to run. In our example, the trigger is going to be someone submitting a form. Now, all we need to do is choose what form builder we want and then set that as our app. So let's click the select it. For my example, I've used Fluent Forms. This then allows us to choose what the trigger is going to be. In our example, submission is inserted. Choose that option. Then it's going to take us over and say, right, now just choose which form you want to use. Drop that down from the list. We could use any form if we didn't care what form was going to be used anywhere across our site. But for this example, we want to use this Bitflows form. How this all works is we have to submit this form once so Bitflows can capture the data. And then we've got some sample data to make sure everything works. This is the same no matter what kind of automation options you're using. OK, so let's hit listen for the response. Let's go to our form. Let's fill it out. Once you fill the info out, hit submit. That submits the form, head back into Bitflows, and you can see that's now captured our response. And this is all the data that's been captured from that form. Click on close. We've now captured the data for our trigger. So the trigger is all set up. So the next thing we can do is set up what action we want. Now, you're not limited to just one action. You can create and build as many actions as you want with lots of different options. And we'll take a very, very brief look at how this works in a moment. So let's start off really simple. When someone submits this form, we want to add them to our mailing list in example, MailerLite. So under our apps, let's search for MailerLite. We'll drag that onto our canvas. And you can see now when we get close, we get this little dotted line that connects the two together. So now we've created a trigger and we've got an action. Let's click on the action. That will then open up the right hand column. And you can see it tells us what action do we have available, create subscriber. Let's select that from our list. So now we simply need to connect this up to our MailerLite account. If we click on add connection, it's going to ask us for some information specific to MailerLite. If we want to find out how to do it, we can click on here and it'll tell us how to go about doing it. And then what we need to do is put in the relevant information. I've already done that and created a connection. So I'm going to just simply choose that from the list. And then that opens up and says, OK, now we've got things connected. How do we want to put this information in? And what information do we want to put into MailerLite? So the first thing we have to do is map the various different fields. Again, this is the same with whatever automation tools you're using. So we only really need to map in at least one option here, and that's the email address for this email marketing. So let's click on the value, and that opens up the options to say where we want to grab the data from. You've got apps, flow, math, string, and system. Now, in this example, we're using an app because we want to grab it from the form data we set in Fluent Forms. And we'll take a look at some of these other options in future videos. I want to keep it pretty simple to start off with. 
So what we need to do now is we're going to grab that data. So we'll open up the form data. And inside there, you can see there's our names, first name and last name, email, subject, and message. And you can see it's even pulled in the data that we submitted in our test setup, that response. So all we need to do is grab the email. There's our email. If we want to, though, we can map additional fields. So let's say we also want to grab their first name. Let's add a field in. You can choose what field you want. So we'll just come in and choose name. Same thing again, click for the value, expand the form data out, expand names and grab their first name. So now we can at least personalize their emails. You can keep on adding more fields should you need to. You can also group. So based upon how you've got in this example mail alert set up, you may have groups. You can connect out and say what group they go into, like general subscriber and so on. You can choose the subscription type and whether you want to update the subscriber. So if they're already included, do you want to update them with whatever information is supplied you if it's different? We'll say yes, we do in this example, and we'll click on close. So now we've created our first flow. We've got our trigger, which is to submit a form, and we've got our action, which is to add them into our mailing list on MailerLite. Pretty cool. That's very, very basic, though. So let's say you want to do other things. Let's say you want to add in some kind of conditions, for example. Can you do it? Yeah. All you need to do is come back up. We'll get rid of this, and we'll go into Tools. And inside there, we've got a couple of extra tools that allow us to do more things. Now, there are still a couple that are going to be coming soon, like create PDFs and those kinds of things. So hopefully, they won't be long before we get access to those. But for now, let's just keep it really simple. Let's go and say add a condition in, for example. So we can drag that over, drop it in, and again, you can see it's connected up. If it doesn't connect up, simply connect it up by dragging it over, joining the nodes, simple as that. So now you can see this is a condition. You also notice we get one, two, and three. These are the different steps as we're kind of going through everything. So everything is running on a nice linear fashion here. So with the conditions, we can add additional conditions in. So we can say, add another condition, click to edit that condition, and say, what do we want to check? So let's just check the form data, for example, and say the email is equal to, and we can put in at bitflows.com. Okay, so there's our condition. We can name this as well. There we go. So we've now added a condition in. Simple as that. We'll add another condition in. You can add another condition. Set it to be an and or condition. Want to get rid of one? Click on delete. Close. Add more conditions in. You kind of get the idea how this could work. And then you can choose what happens based upon which condition. So for example, we want something else to happen. So we'll come into our apps, for example. Let's just say Google Sheets. We'll drop that inside there. We'll connect it up. So we'll say if for some reason that email check is matched, you want to go and connect up to your Google Sheets and you want to add a row in. And then you make a connection like we've seen with MailerLite and so on. So we can set conditions up inside you. Pretty cool. Want to get rid of one of these? Click on the little trash can. Click on yes to get rid of it. Same thing here. Let's click on that. Or you can click on the little wrench icon and you can unlink this if you want to and say, yep, delete it. You kind of get the idea. It's a very simple dashboard and interface to work with. Again, let's come back into our tools. Let's say you want to put a delay in here for some reason. Again, bring it over, connect it up, click on it, set your delay based upon minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. You kind of get the idea. So let's say a 10 minute delay, click on close, and now you've created a delay as well. So you can see how these things all work. And then once we've got everything set up, we've got logs, so we can check everything is working okay. You've also got options then to handle any kind of issues. So if we go to flow settings, for example, if any node fails and a trigger is a node, an action is a node, a delay is a node. What happens? Do you want to continue the execution or do you want to basically block it and stop it? So it's up to you. Again, you can control how that all works. Come back out of that. So there's our flow. And what we can do from here is we can enable or disable it. So for example, if you wanted to set something up and not have it run straight away, just disable it. When you're ready, click to enable it. Your three dots will allow you to come in, edit it, open up the settings like we've just seen with the node issues. Or we can just simply come in and edit this. And you can see we can set tags inside just if you're working with different clients. You may want to tag them with the client name and get, sort of group everything together so you can easily find all the different options you've got. Your connections, if you want to handle those, you can see there's our mailer like connection I set up earlier. If for any reason you were just setting up a test one or you just want to remove it, hit delete, get rid of it. Want to work with webhooks, you can do that here as well. You can create custom apps, and there's various different settings inside here as well. Do you want to get notifications? 
if any of the tasks fail, how long do you want to preserve the logs? So that's basically how you'd start off using BitFlows. This is a really simple overview. And in the next two videos, I will cover in more detail and we'll take a look at how we can actually create some more advanced flows and how we can set all that up. As always, though, if you want to find out any more information about BitFlows, the pricing, and all those kinds of things, links are in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.